So this guy recently was picked out of a dumpster uh, doing some dumpster diving. Put it around here. I didn't grab it because I thought I could use it for anything. I grabbed it mostly because I spotted the seven segment displays on the front. Uh, a couple nice little switches here. It's a 4x4 VGA XVGA audio matrix or video, well audio matrix is what it says. I think it switches video as well, though I don't know. It's fairly heavy. It's got a bunch of uh, DB15s across the back, a DB9 for serial. But I looked at it and went, you know, rather than just let it get ground up and metal reclaim and lose everything, I thought, you know, these little guys are useful. So I, I grabbed it just to do a parts reclaim. That was really my intent here. I hope to be able to desolder these connectors off the PCB inside. You know, these can be really useful for building up a wiring bundle and then just plugging it into something. So uh, I grabbed those out. And I think at this point we'll just open it up, see if there's anything really worth salvaging out of it, and go from there. So couple of Phillips heads here on the back and of course I tend to keep all the hardware uh, there's no reason really not to uh, it's got that red piece of tape on the the front I don't know if you saw it uh, I don't know if the red means it's defective or if it was just uh, surplus it looked like an entire AV system had been removed from some place due to all the stuff that was in there so it may actually be functional Again, I don't know. Got plenty of screws on the space plate. And again, I don't have a use for it. Uh, the people who threw it out obviously didn't think it had any value. And I went, you know, what the heck. Uh, occasionally, find good stuff in equipment like this. So, we'll find out. It is really heavy, which is interesting. Definitely some short little screws. Let's see if we can get that pry up off there or not. Still something holding it in place. I removed the six screws I could see, uh, but it's these Allens on the front. Let's see if I can get those to back out. Not quite the right size Allen wrench, but what the heck. It was close enough to at least break those two loose. And that one. And that one. Yeah, I see in video and audio labeled here. I'm sure it does actually swap or switch both video and audio. any further here. Oh, more Allen screws. And they have a different size. I think they're Allen's. Yeah, that's an Allen. It's a little stiff. It may not come out with just fingers. The uh, things that I don't keep out of this will go back for uh, two more on the top. We'll, we'll go back and, and do recycle bins to be recycled, the steel and aluminum, etc. You know, even though it came out of a, a dumpster, I will make sure that it is properly recycled. Finally in. I already see some stuff worthy of capturing. There's a couple of e at least one EEPROM down here. 230 volt, 2 by 9 volt. That's, that's like a nice little power brick there. That's worth grabbing. Uh, 
trying to figure out what is still holding this little front panel in place. It's just some double sided tape. Yeah, it's just some double sided tape. A couple of nice little bezels. I may have to heat those a bit to break the glue loose, but there's a couple of nice little red bezels there that I'll grab. Well, let's just continue the tear down. screws and standoffs beneath them that'll all be pulled out and sorted just keep releasing stuff here until we get it all loose Card has fallen out. Nice. Let me uh, break all of these guys loose and we'll get those removed. A bunch of them are already missing where people have uh, obviously unscrewed VGA cables. But all of this stuff, in my opinion, is worth holding on to. nut driver would make this easier but I don't have a little nut driver up here it's got a nice little power input block there uh, that's fused and has a filter on it that'll certainly be salvaged and used I see some nice, nice heat sinks I see Not sure what that processor in there is. We will find out. Definitely a lot of surface mount stuff that we'll get to. Some inductors that I'll grab. So yeah, kind of a nice little uh, bundle of stuff. We've got all of that loose. I'm going to assume those are soldered on there. Nice crimped grounds. They did that well over on the input side. These little guys were soldered directly on. I'm debating whether to desolder those and attempt to salvage them. A uh, bunch of transistors. I'm definitely going to pull these guys off. Internal ribbon cables. That's an interesting ribbon cable just to go from point to point. Definitely worth grabbing these ribbon cables. I'll just go in the box of ID ribbon cables. It's nice to have the one you need when you. Uh... Oh, well, that one was actually socketed. Well, it looks like this one over here is socketed as well, based by the height of it. I'm trying to do this and keep it in camera. Let me uh, remove the lugs from the power switch. And we'll get it out of the way. Hopefully at least some of this is showing up on camera. bend the pins on that, but I do want to get it removed from under there. It's kind of an interesting mess. Uh, maybe I can use... Looking through various pointy things, trying to find something that I can get under there. This is actually going into a dip socket 
so it's directly soldered in on this side the board and then going into dip sockets so these ends here are definitely uh, reusable that's a nice little board see about finishing removing I'm just gonna clip the leads it would be a major pain to get in there and uh, undo that Nice little bits of hardware. Another ground strap soldered directly to a board. Of course, it was audio, so I'm sure the uh, ground stuff was done to reduce audio noise. Nice little module there. Uh, power input module with fuse. Definitely worth holding on to. And there's a switch here for 230 or 110. So that's definitely an EEPROM there. P80C32. Oh, it's an ADC32. Uh, I'm going to assume it's not internally programmable because it's got an external EEPROM. There's a nice little full days regular module sitting here do a three pin outline it, it's hot snotted down I'll have to see if I can get him oh there's another one here seems like it's actually a pretty nice little find uh, for what it is I don't remember I don't know what size EEPROM that is, probably a 64K based on the package, or maybe a 256K. Need to be a little more careful here. Getting up under him. So it's a P80C32. I'll have to look up to see if it's generic. You know, if it's not got internal mass programming then it's worth just adding to the stock. Little eight pin dip here, I'll bet it's a real time clock module maybe. Oh, it's actually a little uh, Atmel, it's 20, 24C64, so it's a little uh, RAM. Probably for storing like configurations and that kind of stuff. Uh, little lattice device here, not that I really care. Uh, Definitely some uh, nice bits in this. Let's get these uh, mounting posts out of here. A couple more Phillips head screws. I know I don't have all of this in shot. It's a little bit hard to. Uh, Keep something as large as this fully in shot. I'm guessing there's at least one more over here. There's a couple around this little power brick. There'll be one more there, the way that feels. Yeah, back here. Boards floated loose. Let's see about tearing these little front panels down. 
Oops, it would help if I actually grabbed the Phillips screwdriver. Yes, they are Phillips head screws. worth grabbing is this power switch. It's got the little ears on it to snap in when it's pushed through the mounting panel. But yep, there's a nice little power switch. Looks like it's probably backlit. More sheet metal to go to reclaim. A little tactile push button switches. This one here is dead. Yeah, that one is defective. Oh, they're actually uh, have little LEDs down inside of them. Interesting. Can I get that little cap back on him? Probably goes. orientation looking at the others it's hard to say this one however doesn't return which may be why that may be the whole reason the unit was scrapped definitely will pull those switches these are also a little tactile I will pull those as well I don't think these are backlit pretty sure they're not and of course just some old-school seven segment displays that will get pulled and just put in my box of seven segment displays. So definitely parts worth holding on to there. Machine pin sockets, I will reclaim those. here on a heat sink. Get my finger in there to hold the nut so that'll turn free. There's another couple of screws. Oh, they're holding this power brick on. He looks like he'll be pretty easy to unsolder. Power brick's pretty sweet. Uh, let's see if I can find some additional ratings on it. Two times nine volt, half an amp. Let's see if I can peel up that uh, QA sticker. Power module is definitely uh, potted. It's a good chunk of the weight in here. You know, there's part of it. Come on. So it's two times nine volt, half an amp. Two times six volt, 150 milliamp. See, 2 times 9 volt, half an amp, 2 times 6 volt, oh, 15 amp, 2, point, 2 times 6V-0, 15 amp, and 
10 comma 8 well anyhow so anyhow yeah that's probably worth yanking off there find some life in something uh, I don't want to break these little modules I don't know how tight that hot snot on them is can I even get up under there oh it's not bad at all yeah the hot snot just pops right loose so those little guys can be reclaimed yeah not bad at all I don't know what the rating on them is So that's a 3.3 volt regulator there, and I've been looking for a 3.3 volt for a, a project. So I've got me a regulator now. Got another IC down here that I missed. It's a max. Of course, can't read it. Get the uh, other glasses on my face here and see if I can actually read it. It's a max 3082. Not sure exactly what that is. Yep, and this is a 24 24C04, a little Atmel 8 pin. Some kind of a little RAM or, or you know memory device. Oh, I'm sure it's rewritable. The system stored the configuration in it would be my guess. Let's walk through the other screws here. It's just a little angle bracket for mounting. Can't get good enough grip on the nut on it to uh, spin it loose. for the washing machine in the background. And hold on to these little right angle brackets as well. And we'll just all get sorted into one of the various little hardware bins I've got. Fly stuff along the bottom now. This kind of hardware is always useful. Sweep it back here into the corner. See if I can get a read on what these other semiconductors are. Seventy-nine fifteen. So there's a minus five volt regulator, fifteen volt regulator, a plus fifteen volt regulator, plus twelve volt regulator. And I don't know what a K A O seventy-nine twelve minus twelve. So it's plus and minus fifteen, plus and minus twelve got to be for dealing with the audio. There's an 8075019 device here. I don't know what the heck it is. Don't recognize it. Oh, there's one more guy sitting here. And he has a 7805. There's five 3-pin voltage regulators right there. Pretty nice. any other mechanical teardown before I move on to the soldering stuff.
Doesn't look like it. There's of course the screws here that hold the power brick on. I'll unsolder it first. Uh, I don't know if I'll reclaim these DB15 female PCB mount. I've got a number of these. I'll see when I get to that point. Kernel, pretty nice. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six machine pin sockets. I've been looking, I think I said in a previous video, machine pin sockets uh, from my Apple II build. I like to get all the ROMs and processor in, in machine pin sockets, even if the logic is in uh, standard double wipe sockets. A couple of diode bridges here. The two inductors I will grab off the board. The dip switch I will of course grab. Well, the next step is to get the desoldering tool heated up and start to pull stuff off. Uh, if you've gotten this far and don't want to watch me desolder, uh, go ahead and, and you know end watching now. Otherwise, uh, I'll be back in a few minutes uh, desoldering. So I took a, just a, a hair dryer, 1800 watt hair dryer, and heated the metal with the two bezels in it up, and just heated it up gently, and that heat was enough to release the glue. So I did was able to get these two nice little plastic bezels out of there as well, and they're actually in really good shape. So those are definitely potentially reusable for a project. I've got the desoldering tool plugged in. It's warmed up and ready to go. We'll see if I can actually you solder anything. Two of those pins didn't release as well as I would have liked. So we'll just put some fresh solder back down. It looks to me like they're probably both power bus. stand for the soldering station. Come on, heat up. There you go. Ouch. Well, I managed to stab myself. He came out of there. Okay. Not as well as I would have liked, but it did come out of there okay. Hoping to be able to desolder these guys. Oh yeah, it does fit on there. Right? fell out, which is the best way. Always nice when the component just falls out. Uh, 
stuff. Remember back in the beginning of the video, we pulled these guys off the back of the case. These are, of course, the ow, female side, these connectors. Am I plugging those in upside down? No, they only go in one way. And just clip in very tight. Uh, or don't go in at all. I'm well, not sure why that one's not lining up. Oh, I do see what it is. The pins. pins down inside of these have actually rotated so I did a little bit of damage it looks like these soldering them not that that can't be rectified I'm not really sure why those would have twisted like that it actually doesn't make a lot of sense to me all of those would be like that. I wonder if I did that during the desoldering. Well, these may end up being throwaway. Take a look down in those. Those are nice and centered. Let me see if it'll fall out nice and centered. If not, I'm somehow damaging it during the desoldering. Maybe a little too much heat. A little too much dwell time. One of those shifted as well. Not really sure why, huh? Well, that is hot. I mean, I can certainly bend it back to where it's supposed to be. Yeah, the two I forced together earlier, I've definitely bent pins down inside, so kind of screwed up. It's a little less dwell time. But it is what it is. You know, with those damaged, with those damaged, I really don't want to put them into my stock they'll get soldered up to something and then I'll discover they're damaged and I've got a rework or whatever so I have to spend a little bit of time to see if I can salvage them or if they just are throwaways it's just curious to me that the pin bent like the, the pins have shifted like that inside of these I wouldn't have expected that this board was wave soldered. Those need to be able to take wave soldering temperature. So let's see how, oops, these three ended up. That one looks perfect. That one, the pins were all askew in. This one's no, this one should be fine looking at it. So that's really weird that some of these had all the pins shift like that. Oh yeah, that one's trash. At this point. That one's trash. Well, you know. That base is recoverable. It's just got one pin that's a little bit off down in there. Do 
don't know why they're being such a bear. That's really... Poor heat profile. It's actually got a couple here that are... That's a throwaway, but I'll hold on to these. So let's drop off the semiconductors. fell on the floor. It was a screwdriver. What else on here was I after? There's a couple of inductors that I'll grab. side to desolder. It's tied down into a large power plane so it looks like. bend over I don't think I'm gonna get him off of there with any kind of success which is fine I'll just uh place off the ribbon cable and call it good that's certainly worth holding on to uh, LM 347s I think those are op amps, I'm not sure. I don't think, honestly, they're worth pulling. This might be some kind of... I don't know what a TLE 2064 is, but I'm guessing it's some kind of an analog switch of some sort. I'll have to look those up and make a decision whether they're worth yanking off there or not. That'll be down the road. Ah! Uh. 
take out the uh, mounting screws. And apologies, I know this is off camera. Well, I can already see that side's loose. Big old potted power brick. I'm sure I can look this up, find out the pinout. That's a nice module. Might actually be useful. Powertrans P17 85T105V Powertrans PET79 The same markings, just a uh, have no idea what voltage rating on one is. Uh, they're, they're obviously meant to replace a three pin style regulator. Uh, but I'll be able to look those part numbers up and figure out what voltages these are. So those are actually nice little units. The uh, hot snot does come off pretty cleanly. Plenty of projects. Those can potentially be used in, especially if they're 5 volt. Uh, I don't know if I can get over these pins here or not. I can't. Probably not going to be able to remove that switch. I need to order some larger tips for the soldering station. dip switch up out of there. A nice little four position dip switch. That's a nice little grab. Definitely can be useful. The uh, little crystal here I will grab. And there's the little crystal. Read it. Uh, Eleven point oh five eight two megahertz. It looks like kind of a weird value. Got a little three point three volt voltage regulator there that I say is already targeted for another project. I've been going to order some of these, so finding one is nice. There he is. Uh, we'll grab these couple of inductors. There it goes. 
the electrolytics, of course, there's no reason to grab those. Uh, they've lived in this case for some period of time. Uh, I just don't reclaim electrolytics. It's just not, to me, a wise use of component reclaim. Let's see if I can get one of these dip sockets to drop it off. That sounds right. Nope, he's got a broken pin on him. That's what I thought. So he is trash. It's too sad. The problem with these machine sockets is the pins are fairly brittle. So it's, let me have the heat a little hot on here too. Let me bring the heat down to a, about two. Yeah, this was up at 450 for some reason. Uh, I'm sure based on something I was doing previously. It does not need to be that hot. A couple of inductors here, just a little inline beads. I'll grab. Cleaning spring. They get knocked off onto the floor. No. There it is. I'll just give this a run through. socket and see if I can actually not destroy this one. Those are all grounds. So they may not have released well. sound very promising honestly. No, he's very solidly still in there. I can see all the way through that ground plane he's just on very solid so I don't know that I'm going to get him off without damaging him. plane has really got it caught up. A lot of work for a little like eight pin socket. Got all eight pins out, but then bent one. And like I said, these little pins are very brittle on these sockets. Whether that was worth the work is highly debatable. I'm not even going to attempt to remove that socket. It just, it's got all that ground plane.
power plane underneath it. It's a power pass through looking at it. Uh, the 40 pin and 28 pin I think can be released pretty easily. And even that little 8 pin. You know this is only a two layer board. There's no ground plane inside. If there was a ground plane, I probably wouldn't even be attempting this. tool. still a lot of solder on the face side of the board to a lot of pins. This may just mean that I am uh, got so much solder collected up in here you just can't draw a good vacuum. And I do. It's absolutely absolutely caked up inside of here which has greatly reduced the uh, suction so let me get that ball of solder to drop out of there that little mountain right there it's nice and hot basically it cut the airflow almost completely off and that's on me for not cleaning it earlier. So, is what it is. Get lazy and tools don't work as well. Uh, this goes this way in here. I've actually remove the power there. I'm going to stop recording here and clean this mess up. So after uh, cleaning out the desoldering tool and applying a bit of fresh solder, this just isn't going to lie flush very well. I'm back to try again. Hopefully I can get this socket to come off clean this time. the tool earlier than I did, obviously.
loose. Oh, that's how it should be. It just lifted right up out of there, no problem. So if I'd have kept the tool clean and producing decent suction, I would have gotten that out of there the first time. So let's tackle the 40 pin one. fresh solder or not on here. I get the impression this is probably lead-free solder on this board. Although it's pretty shiny, so maybe it isn't lead-free. I don't know. like it to just fall out of there, but it's obviously I'm not just going to fall out. I probably got that off camera. One side just came right up out, and so did the other side. So, we've got a pin somewhere that's being a little bit, a little bit trying. All 40 pins. be a little bit of warpage to the socket. I probably should have done every other pin and then came back, but I didn't. I'm tempted now to re-solder this one and try to get it off of there. We've got a little bit better suction going on here. Let's flow some fresh solder on here. Need to be pretty. We'll try that guy again. Somewhat. If I can see which pin it is, that's, there's two of them there that really haven't released well. I think that got it. So I just, a little bit of a bent pin. Come out successfully. So, anything else on here that should be pulled? I pulled the uh, switch over here off earlier just using a soldering pencil and the standard soldering tool. 
since the tip on this is too small to fit over those pins. You know, diodes really aren't worth yanking. These DB15s I don't think are worth yanking. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I guess I could pull that resistor and it'll work. I'm sure it's probably a 1K or a 10K pull up, bust. Pretty much in the application it's in here. Almost guaranteed that's what it is. warm still. It's a uh, 22k actually? Or 2.2k. 22k, that's interesting. That's pretty large. I wonder what it was in there for. Of course, proved me wrong. Certainly not the first time. It won't be the last. That's a uh, Max 232 essentially sitting right there. Worth grabbing. Uh, Serial. Uh, uh, 5 volt to uh, TTL level uh, translator. Uh, 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 no reason not to grab it. Uh, Microfarad electrolytics to be used for the charge pumps. We'll grab those as well. If they really haven't been stressed. Uh, let's see if the IC will pop loose. As soon as I figure out where I lost the screwdriver at. And just like that. Max 232 is out. I think that really is it. I always eyeball the electrolytics. I don't even recognize the brand on them. It would be foolish to pull them and reuse them. Just ask them for trouble. Downstream, I don't know what these devices here are. I'm guessing there's some kind of analog multiplexer or whether they're worth pulling is always debatable. solder very well. Um, there's one pin I can see that's still very much stuck. Whether that released it, I don't know. Just do the volume of solder. bit stubborn. Uh, 
There's a probably a ground here based on the width of the copper that's hung us up before. So I'm gonna a little bit more dwell time on that pin. Uh, that one doesn't look released. So stubborn. It really is just being stubborn. I forgot what pin it is that isn't. Where it is. Oh, I see the pin, it's actually uh Trace on the top of the board has lifted off. Now well, I bent the pins up, but it came out clean except for that bit of attached trace. It could have been better, but it is what it is. Of course, he just came loose, no problem, just right up and out of, just right up and out, no big deal. Uh, and of course, now it's like, should I go ahead and pull the 347s as well? One of the things I lacking in my stock is analog stuff. I don't have a whole lot of it. I'm starting kind of building up a stock of analog stuff. I've always been very focused on digital. I don't know how good or bad a, I'm assuming op amp and LM374 is, but I'm here. It's not going to hurt to see if it'll pull.
by the noise it's starting to plug up a bit again it sounds like just right up out of there and same thing here come out nice and clean I think that really is the end for those two boards actually end up on there's one more board actually two more let's see if we can get these tore down that pin was uh, bent over to hold the component in during soldering. Let's see if it actually came loose, if I'm going to have to apply a bit more heat. Which pin is it? switches. One of them was bad. It's that one right there. Yep. So I don't need to pull it.
pins are a little large for the opening in the soldering tool. I'm not sure that this is actually going to work. It's not. The pin is just large enough, it's plugging up the hole on the desoldering tool. So I would have to pull those off manually. And I'm debating whether to pull the LEDs out or actually leave. Might be worth leaving these in the array since they're set up for multiplexing. They're already hooked up in, in two nice groups of four. This might be worth holding on to just the way it is. Rather than tear down. You know, those would be fairly easy to drive. It'd be easy, pretty easy, pretty quick to figure out what those are. These are uh, 5082-7613, made in Thailand. I don't know if the 7613 cannot be a manufacturing date. This unit was newer than that. I don't think they had a VGA standard in 76, so I'm sure it's a part number. Anyhow, I think I'm going to wrap this up here. I've had enough desoldering for the day. Uh, we'll talk soon.